Did you know that you can turn your line drawing into a pencil style rendering in Photoshop just under 10 minutes? In this video, we'll be looking at how to create this style of a rendering using the 50 pencil brush sets that we've created. This brush set has got some really amazing reception with hundreds of downloads. You can get this brush from my Gumroad page and the link is in the description. So this is the base image that we'll be rendering today. A line drawing that I made of Falling Waters by Eiffel Wright, one of the iconic architectural buildings. You can download this base image from the link in description and practice it along with the video as well. We'll be using the Photoshop pencil brushes that we mentioned earlier. So the first thing is to lock the base layer. This is because we sometimes tend to add our textures over the base layer along the process and we won't be able to figure it out until we've gone a few steps further. So it's safe to lock the base layer before starting. And the textures and rendering happen only on the new layers that we create. We'll start by rendering the main blocks of the structure. So let's select each plane from the base layer. We can choose the vertical line hatch from the brush set. And all we have to do is just draw over the selection on the new layer. This gives us a uniform pencil hatch. So let's repeat the same process on the other surfaces as well. Select the surface on the base layer switch to a new layer and draw with the brush. These bottom surfaces of the volume can have a diagonal hatching. So let's select the surface, choose a diagonal hatching from the brush set and add the hatch just like the ones we did earlier. Repeat the same process for the other bottom surfaces as well. Now these vertical blocks on the building have a stone cladding on them. So we have a set of stone textures in our brush set. So let's go and search for them. Once we've selected them, you can draw over the plane and add the stone texture on them. So these planes which are set a little inside will have shadows falling on them. So let's make a selection roughly in the direction of the shadows, a sort of a diagonal selection and add diagonal hatches on each of the support walls. So similarly, let's add a rough cast shadows under all the roof projections as well by making a selection and using the vertical line brush. Now that we've got the basic line shading done on the main building, so let's move ahead and shade the other parts of the drawing. Right below the building, we have a series of rocks. So let's create a new layer and rename them as rocks. So these line drawing in the rocks have individual segments in them, meaning that each rock is an individual component. So what we can try to do is, let's select every alternate segment in the rock and try to texture them. This will give a variable texture that imitates the appearance of a rock. So inside our brush set, we have a series of crosshatch brushes. Select crosshatch 2 and hatch along the edges of the selection. Make sure to not hatch the entire selection or else the textures might look too flat. It's always better to leave some white spaces in the middle that gives the appearance of light falling on them. Once we have done, we can choose the other parts of the rock just like how we did before by selecting the alternate parts and repeat the same process. So the left side of the series of rocks is done. Let's move on to the right side and do the same process over again. We've missed a piece of rock on the left side, so let's fill that up as well. We can now move on to the bottom side of the drawing, which is water. So let's create a new layer and rename them as water. Let's make a selection of the area on the base layer and go to brushes. Inside the brush set, we have two different types of water brushes. Let's select the second one for now. Make sure you pick the water layer and just like how we did for the rocks, we can start along the edges of water and move our way in. Let's also adjust the opacity of the brush once in a while so that we get a perfect blend of line weights. The edges of the shore are usually dark, so let's darken them a bit. So we've got the effect of water. So now let's choose the area where there's waterfalls. So to get the effect of waterfall, let's start by choosing the basic pencil brush and let's draw lines on them to indicate the direction of water flow. So let's draw lines to just indicate that kind of a water flow. So once we've done, let's go and choose the other brush set of water. Using this brush set, we could shade over the edges of the waterfalls that gives some sort of a realistic texture. We can also go back and choose the basic pencil brush and draw splashes that give more character to the drawing. So next, let's start working on the vegetation. Let's create a new layer and rename it as grass. 
Under the brush set, we have a lot of vegetation brushes. So let's start by choosing the number 3 brush and let's draw over the terrain lines. If you're using a drawing tablet, then the brushes will give a variation of sizes and opacity. This will give a more character to the drawing. Let's choose the other grass patch and fill up the edges so that it looks natural. We can then add trees to the drawing by creating a new layer and renaming it as trees. Let's choose tree 2 and add them on both sides of the building but also varying the sizes and opacity as we draw. Let's choose the other tree brush and draw where we want the background trees to be. It's completely fine if it goes over the building, we can resolve that in the next step. So now quite obviously the trees needs to be behind the building. So let's pull down the tree layer and drop it behind the base layer. So choose the base layer and click the sky area. Now we've selected the sky but we actually need an inverse of the selection. We can do that by right clicking and going on to select inverse. Once you've done that, just create a new layer, rename it as white and using the paint bucket, just drop a white color over the selection. Move this white layer in between the base and the trees. So now when you see, this fixes the problem of trees overlapping. So in case you want to add trees that are in front of the building, you can do that by creating a new layer and all the trees that you add will be in front of the main structure. So now I'll teach you a little trick that I follow in all my drawings to give the image a good contrast and sharper texture. Let's create a new layer and rename them as burn. Under the blend modes, choose the color burn. Now just select a light shade of gray and using the paint bucket, drop it over the image. You can instantly see the difference that it makes. When you adjust the shade of gray, it gives a more contrasting image but right now we don't want too much of contrast, so let's just select a light grey for it. This gives that kind of a graphite pencil effect with a rich contrast. I'm erasing a small part of the base lines on the right side of the building to indicate the effect of light falling on them. So right now when we see, the base lines are not as dark as the surrounding texture and we can fix that by just duplicating the line layer. We can change the blend mode to multiply and change the opacity as per liking. So now let's create the effect of light coming from the windows of the building using this color palette. This color palette has a use of yellow and orange and let's start by choosing the lightest shade from it. Create a new layer and select the window areas in the drawing where we want light effect to be coming from. Drop the basic yellow with the paint bucket and change the blend mode to multiply. So we'll need a small gradient of yellow in this base layer. So let's use a basic soft brush and add some tones of orange at the end and a lighter shade of yellow in the middle. So inside our brush set, we have a brush that is called shading. So let's select that, create a new layer and change the blend mode to multiply. Select a darker shade of orange from the color palette and shade along the edges of the selection. We can play around with the opacity to get a nice blend. Once you've done that, let's create a new layer once again and the blend mode of this layer is going to be overlay. Let's pick a contrasting shade of yellow and draw over the selection. You can notice that this is starting to give a glowing effect from the windows. Let's also pick a lighter shade of yellow and shade over it. Now we'll have to create the fourth layer and this layer is going to be in soft light. So using the basic soft brush, we can draw around the yellow areas. We can highlight parts of the window and the window frames also a bit. You can change the opacity and play around with it to see which effect looks the best. There are no set rules for this, so you'll have to trust your instinct. This looks good now, so you can add some more three-dimensional effect to it by going to the base multiply layer and adding some shade of browns to it. So to get the lighting effect, we needed four different layers. So let's rename them so that we don't get confused and add all of them into a single group. We are almost done with the drawing and this is the part where we create more character to the drawing by drawing darker edge lines. Let's create a new layer and call it line 2. All we have to do is roughly draw over the edges of each plane in the building. So these lines do not have to be accurate or perfect and it can completely go over the baselines as well. 
So this will give a distinct character to the edges of the drawing and gives the appearance of an architectural sketch. We can do the same to the rock areas as well where we'll have to define the rough edges of the rocky texture. As you can see, I'm just using the base hatching that we did as a reference and quickly drawing the terrain around them. Add rough lines and scratch marks over them to get the feel of a rocky material. These walls of the building appear a bit too white, so let's roughly shade them using the basic pencil. Let's also add some lines to the background and some hatching over the water texture would be good. So the final step on the drawing is to add highlights. This is similar to the last step that we did, but the only difference is we'll be using a white pencil brush instead of the grey ones. So let's use this white pencil brush to emphasize the edges of the rock and also highlight the reflections in the water texture. You can add a sky texture behind the building if you like and that concludes the rendering. You can download a free copy of this PSD file for your reference and the link is in the description. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and share it with your friends. I'll see you on the next one.